we're going to begin the conference call for module two. So, folks, we are here. This is module two. Thanks for joining. I'm joined by George. George, say hello. Hello. <laughs> and uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to just start the conference call, uh, <clears throat> the coaching call, by doing a quick checklist, so to speak. So uh, by now, you should, yes, George, I heard you. Uh, by now, you should have a DBA. You should have um, a, a squeeze page set up. You should have an, an identity set up that, with your DBA, that corresponds with your DBA. You should have Facebook accounts, Twitter accounts. Uh, the whole nine, and uh, you should be a member of the Facebook Flip That Contract group. Uh, all of you are not. As you can see on my screen right now, there are actually only 22 members in this group, and there are more students than that. So you guys, and uh, I also noticed, I was looking through the YouTube channel today, you're not, you haven't all subscribed to the uh, Flip That Contract YouTube channel. So you need to go back through Module 1 and really... Uh, you know, make sure you guys are doing the little things right now because the next two weeks is going to take you from concept to execution. And if you don't do these little things now, it will make it more difficult in a couple weeks. Um, I want to talk real quick about about the uh, flip that contract portal. I'm gonna get in here real quick. Um, Log in. Uh, trying to go in and view it the way you guys view it. Okay. Try to look at these at these uh, recent questions and comments when you log in. Uh, you know, learn from other people's uh, questions and answers. Check this almost daily. You noticed uh, a couple of you guys were looking for the conference call information yesterday, and uh, it was right here. So within the portal, when you go to flip that contract, you just click here on this top part where it says flip that contract, and what it will do is it will bring up all the different things. And I created a new, two new things this week, coaching calls and coaching call follow-up. During these coaching calls and after these coaching calls, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and post them here in this coaching call follow-up. Uh, and then also every week here in the coaching call section, this is where we will paste that week's call information. George and I are going to rotate it around. We know some of the students have to work day jobs and vice versa. Some of the students have to work night jobs. So what George and I are going to do is let you guys uh, we're going to change it around, and every week the call will be different. And so hopefully what that will do is make it where sometimes you guys can attend and, you know, hopefully you can attend as often as possible. We just want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to uh, attend live. So. Hey, where are we putting, Tim, where are we putting the, um, uh, are we, we're recording these calls, right? Yes, uh, this conference. So, where would they, if they were to miss today, you know, someone's working right now and they can't be on the call. Where, where are we going to put that? Is that under flip that contract? Oh, no, it, under. It's in the corresponding module. So here you go into module one, and if you scroll down, you see module one coaching call. And if they click there on module one coaching call. It will bring up the actual coaching call. You can hit play, bring, bring, bring it to full screen, and uh, you'll be able to watch the coaching call. This is the first of many coaching calls. I, al I, al I always recommend you hit pause, specifically on a recording this long that's 58 minutes long, uh, and let it buffer a good bit. That way, the audio and the video are in sync. I had been told that some of the conference call 
audio video were out of whack. And I'll tell you guys, it's a large a large part of that is uh, you, you're not letting it buffer, and it just takes a while for the sound and the video aren't catching up. So if you'll just hit pause and let it buffer, if you don't have a high speed connection, uh, you know, a 58 minute video to stream it is a, a, pr a pretty long video. So that's the uh, that's where they find it. And, and so this week's George to answer your question, this week's will be posted here under mod module two. They'll just select module two, and they'll scroll down, and it will be down here at the bottom. Yeah, and I wanted to find out, Tim, if everybody got into the Roddy network. You know, because um, Kathy uh, was supposed to, I just added that smart offer sheet. I just wanted to do that so that I can take that down but um, on the document library. Um, but I wanted to make sure that everybody, did everybody get, or raise, don't raise your hand, but if you did not get an email from Kathy Arrington um, about how to log in to Roddy Network, and you have a username and a password, and um, so you can start watching that, because Tim, I had a conversation with one of our students yesterday, you know, about, hey, uh, you know, which, which lead should I go after, and I don't know if you were going to talk about that, but you know it can be a little overwhelming it can be it can get pretty expensive um, and we are they need to realize that we are running a business and we got to have motivated seller leads uh, each and every month I mean we need to we need to be part of this is you know we've got to get the word out on who we are and what we do but um, you know I don't we don't expect that you subscribe or um, put implement every different lead source but you do need to implement some you know and you need to sprinkle in a few different lead sources each and every month so you got to pick your poison you know uh, Tim my background is more pre foreclosures so you know sending out and marketing to pre foreclosures um, you know how many times and we're going to talk about that today but and then you know tax liens and absentee owners and probate and post bankruptcies and people that are you know mortgage late leads um, you know, these are you. You know, I don't. I don't. We don't expect for you to subscribe or send out to every one of these. But you, you, I think you need to have at least two to three of these motivated seller leads that you set up where you're getting it, and you know when the when the leads come out, and have a plan. You got to set a plan on your calendar. On I get the leads. I got to get them into my contact database whether that's Excel or real prospect or what have you and then I've got to get them out I've got to get these mail pieces out all right I might have lost we might have lost Tim but I'll keep on talking um, and Tim you're driving no no so, no I'm not okay. I, I, I'm, I have myself muted uh, you, you had said something about uh, setting them up on Roddy Network. Uh, yeah. So is everybody getting set up on net Roddy Network and what for? Yeah, yeah, pull, pull up Roddy Network. Pull up Roddy Network and just show, I just want to make sure everybody knows how to get those, um, the bonus classes, you know, the bonuses that we, um, we offered. Um, RODDYnetwork.com, yeah. Yeah, I typed it wrong. Okay. So basically what they do is up at the top right, Tim, you know, the username and the password. We're going to, you know, everybody should have been sent right here uh, or go down with your mouse a little bit right there at the top right. Username and password. You type in your username and your password and then it will light up because you see if you scroll down, everything is, um, is private, right? But if you scroll down, Land trust, how to buy foreclosures, Texas tax liens, title research, uh, short sales, and probate. Those will all light up. And um, bottom line is, um, I'm gonna, you know, here. Why don't I do this, Tim? I'm gonna, I'm gonna type in, give you the. Uh, you want me to show your? I can, let me, I can show your screen, George. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let me see. Uh, you yeah, are, you are now the presenter. Okay. So then you just got to hit the little play button up at the top that says show my screen. Okay. Hold on. Yeah, 
and let me close that out. Okay. All right. Can you guys see my screen now? Yes. So when I log in, you know, it's welcome because it automatically reads me, and everybody should have a login name and a password because Kathy sent that out on Monday. And so you see how everything's lit up? And you can see when I, I can see when people ask me questions. So what, what I want all everybody to do this weekend is I want you to go in and click on how to buy Texas foreclosures. And there's really two sections. You have a Q&A and then you have the video access and the workbook. So you know what you want to do is you want to um, click on this link and then download the actual workbook. So I've split it up into two different sections pages 1 through 35 and 36 through 60, uh, 68. So you print that out and then you come back and then I want you to start watching the videos. And you click here and it will take you to another screen. And then it, there's all your videos. Okay, How to buy workshop um, pages 1 through 11 and so when you click on that there is your, there's the video of the how to buy foreclosure class, and it's just, you know, it's three hours of, of discussing, going in detail to how to buy foreclosures, and and some people, some of you guys have the capital to to buy these, but most of you guys, this program and this this program is about finding motivated people, getting those properties under contract. So, um, you know the. We've talked about it, and that's what some of the programs are. But this is more, you know, it's, there's 20 hours worth of content here. So download the workbooks, watch the videos. You know, you click here, and it's just a screen capture, just like you're used to. And so it just it's a live training class. There you go. So you get, you get the gist. But um, let me close that out. Everybody, I just... I want to make sure everybody has access access to this and knows how to get in here. Um, let me go okay. back. So, so, so if you don't have access, you need to send an email to edu at flipthatcontract.com, and uh, we will track it and make sure that you did get that email access. Uh, if you're a new student, we'll make sure that you uh, get spooled up on that real quickly. Right. And so after you watch it, you might have some questions. Tim, what do you want them to do? Uh, I mean, because I have a Q&A here, or do, you want, do you want them to ask it here, or do you want to ask it on FTC site? Let's, uh, I mean, if you have a question regarding something you watch on the Roddy Network, go ahead and ask it on the Roddy Network. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, okay, because basically this is how you would do that. It's once, you know, down here is where you get access in the workbook. Up here, and there's some downloadable forms, but up here is the Q&A support. And then it's just, you know, I can see where what you do is um, you post a question by clicking here on new thread. So, you know, you would just click on new thread and, it, and you put the title, ask me the question, and then it notifies me. Okay. And then I'll see it. And then uh, just like Christine, there was a property that we're interested in January. Da, da, da. And so then I come down here and say, hey, this happens a lot. So many lenders. So it's just if you have questions that's how you do it now if you have what kind of marketing pieces what kind of uh, what kind of postcards you know so that that to me falls under the FTC you know it's, it's kind of uh, philosophical but you know what do you mean by this lean or something like that then ask it under the Roddy network all right okay um, you know, you know these things are. How do I switch back? Just hit that. Uh, I'll take it, uh, George. These things are important whether you're, you're wanting to wholesale or not, because it, I've always said that it's all about showing your knowledge, and this is knowledge that you, you need to learn and you need to be able to speak to when people start, because uh, you'll have motivated sellers that call you that happen to be in foreclosure, and the more that you can express a confidence and a uh, well as long as you know the process I mean you know these the part of these trainings are 
you know, Tim, all about learning, you know, um, the four P's, right? The four P's, meaning the process, the players, the pitfalls, and the profit centers. And so, you know, once you know the process, when someone calls me and says, you know, hey, I'm posted for foreclosure, and I'd ask, all right, for this month? I mean, you've already received notice, and then I already know that August 2nd is the auction, and, you know, I might not have time to go through a title company. I might not, you know, I mean, although we still have a couple weeks or uh, yeah, a week and a half, it, um, it, it still, it, it changes my um, direction and how I'm not going to have 14 days to shop this contract around. Does that make sense? Because we've got to close, um, you know, just looking at my calendar, we've got, looks like 10 days before, 11 days before the next auction. And so that's going to change the way I structure this deal and how I write up this deal. Exactly. So one of the things that I wanted to do today, George, is talk to the students about their backyard. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, this is the point where in, in, the, in all of our training and education where people want to start, uh, where the students want to start jumping out there and trying to bite off more than they can chew. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I wanted to, uh, let's see. Open this one. I want to be able to draw on it. Okay. Opened it in the wrong program again. Uh, what, what I want to do, guys, I want to talk to you about this backyard concept. And then what I'm going to do is show you how to uh, design a a uh, strategy to get you out there and to quote unquote drive for dollars. Uh, let's see. Edit. This thing is not letting me zoom. Okay. We're going to close this out. That's not working, guys. Okay, you're all just going to have to have to watch my cursor as I talk. Uh, computers never cooperate whenever you uh, need them to. So we're going to go in here, and this is a this is what a Mapsco page looks like. If you don't have a Mapsco, I highly recommend you get one. Uh, they 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 cost very little. I think they're like thirty bucks. And uh, the thing about a Mapsco is you don't have to worry about GPS signal or 3G connectivity. Uh, you've always got a map. So this is a snapshot of an area that I actively target. Uh, because if you look here where the cursor is, that's Heath. That's where I live. For me to get from here, I have to go all the way up to Interstate 30 into Interstate 30, up 635 for me to get to really civilization. That's why I don't like to drive to Addison, which is way over here. So what I do is I target my buying pretty much from Interstate 75 down to Loop 12 over to 352 out to the Dallas County line to the edge of Sunnyvale and then really back up here through Forney, into Heath, Rockwall, up into Garland, Rowlett. It's really this big circle that I'm drawing with my cursor. It's basically everything that's 30 minutes away from my house because that's where we all start every morning. And uh, it's important not to think, even though I may have an office that's here or you may have an office that's here, if you live here, on Saturday, when you have to go to the appointment, you're not starting from your office. You're starting from here. So I like to keep everything 30 minutes from here, and that's what I target. And, George, you and I have talked about this. I, that's what I specifically target. Now, if there's a probate lead, I, do, I don't look at where those houses are. I send all of those. So every now and then I do get calls over here and up here. Or you may send someone a mailer here. And they may own a house out here in Farmer's Branch or Irving. 
and you go ahead and go on that lead, but you're not targeting that lead. So this is the way I define my backyard. Uh, that is my backyard. I, Heath, Rockwall, Rowlett, Garland, Richardson, this eastern section of Dallas, Mesquite, Sunnyvale, those are really the, the areas, those are the cities that I target. But it's important to note that that's after years and years and years of doing this. I recommend if you want to create a realistic budget, I recommend you start out with a backyard about like what you see in, on, the, on the screen now. This is a MAPSCO page, Map, MAPSCO page 29A, and it's Garland 75043. Now, I've had a lot of success in this neighborhood, in, 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 on this MAPSCO page. Now, this MAPSCO page, when you look at it, there are thousands of houses. That is way too big of an area to just blanketly target. Uh, but what you can do is you can take MAPSCO page 29A and you can take grid block A and you can actually go out and drive every street in that grid block in about an hour to an hour and a half to drive it right. And you can look for abandoned and vacant houses, targets. Now, the reason I say that is some of you may be thinking that, uh, uh oh, hang on, someone's asking a question. Uh, the question is, would some areas of the Metroplex have less deals than others? Would Collin County have less deals than, say, East Dallas, just because Collin County has more upper class homes with probably less equity? Uh, it, it, I, I, would, I don't define it by areas, Justin. I define it by neighborhoods. Uh, on this map page, there are neighborhoods that are better than others. Uh, you get up here into Taylor, Wanda, Washington, Edgefield. There's some good houses up here, but the problem is a lot of them are two-bedroom houses. And they're just not good target houses. Then you get on this side of Derry, and there's some great houses up in here. High Meadow, Cherrywood, Susan, Glenn, Richard, Curtis. I bought houses on every one of those streets. You get across here, across this little uh, Greenbelt area, and some of these houses are, are newer, and uh, there, there's not much of an opportunity there. You drop down here off a country club over here in the High Valley, and a lot of those houses are newer, and there's not as much opportunity. And so it goes block by block and, and, and area by area. I mean, yeah, you're not going to go into Frisco into a new neighborhood that's been built for three years and spend time driving for dollars. Uh, for this strategy, you really want to find a neighborhood that's, at least 20 years old, uh, because then, if they if the neighborhood is 20 years old, you're probably going to have some original homeowners left, and those original homeowners are more likely to have equity than uh, someone that's only lived in a house for two years. Now, that's for a high equity assignment. If you're looking for low equity mortgage assignments, <laughs> it's exact opposite. Specifically, when you find a house that's in a nicer neighborhood that isn't being taken care of. Those people may need to exercise a creative option like today. So I wouldn't say rule them out. It just depends on whichever strategy you're intending to implement. Uh, we're going to go to, I'm going to take you guys into a neighborhood that, that I had, that uh, I'm actually, there's a video that I've already recorded where I'm going to take you guys through this map block right here, 29AJ. And guys, this is going to be an hour and a half video by the time I'm done editing it, and so you're just going to have to be patient when you watch it. But see, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm touring you through this video, this, this neighborhood, because here you have a major street, here you have a major street, you don't know it, but this street is very significant, and then you get over to here, and anything on the other side of this street is, is a big change. Uh, I, have, I actually own a rental here on Carolyn. I own a rental on Linda, I own two on Cascade, and I own one on Ridgewood. So uh, this is a neighborhood I'm very familiar with. I've bought dozens of houses in here, and I went through and recorded video of driving for dollars and the things you look for and the things you don't look for. Uh, this is a great neighborhood to look at. And uh, 
So that video, guys, watch the portal. It'll be out there soon. But but the way you do this, and I'm going to upload you a spreadsheet to uh, Rustin. You had asked for that, and I, I've got that spreadsheet made. I just need to upload it to the portal. Uh, so that when you find the house at 621 East Daughtery, you know what to do with it. You know how to write it down, and you know, and uh, you can mail them the six-letter series, or you and you can add them to your Digley postcard list. So I mean, this is the if any of you, what I highly recommend you do is you define your backyard as a zip code, and then you get the Mapsco book out. Like, see this zip code. See, this is the nice thing about Mapsco, guys. It has the zip codes on the map. So here's Eastern Hills Country Club, which really isn't a country club, but they still call it one. Uh, it's that this is in seven five zero four three, but you get right here across Miller Road, and it turns into seven five zero four zero. And if you look here, where Centerville comes up to meet Miller, this is all seven five zero four one. So this is this another reason that I I've, I picked this page is this page is a prime example of houses of of a an area of Garland that you have three zip codes on one page and all three zip codes are in my target area. So you got to define your backyard and then um, we've got another another video coming up about motivated uh, about uh, absentee owners George in the Roddy network do you have that absentee owner video uh, yeah uh, let me see I'm trying to think um, or should we just record another one and upload it to the no uh, no I think I do I think I have it on uh, I've already recorded it I just have to embed it on flip that contract okay 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 yeah yeah I told everybody before you got on the call that We've had some PC issues this week, and I think they're all resolved. Uh, so, uh, you know, guys, I I don't want you rushing out trying to design a marketing strategy for August yet, okay? It, it's too early to be ordering postcards and picking which mailer you're going to send. Uh, I might, what, what we're thinking is today is the 22nd. Probably by the first week of August, end of the first week of August, we'll be ready to tell you guys to uh, go ahead and drop your first batch of mailers, whether it be 100 or 300 pieces. Uh, we got to get you all the way through Module 3 and Module 4 uh, before. Uh, we definitely have to get you all the way through Module 3 before we can do that. So, uh, George, what else? You, you got anything else for Module 2? Um, I, I think Module 2. You know, the big thing is, um, yeah, I, I definitely think that we all need to focus, and Justin's on the call, he had that question about which, which area is better, and, and I, I don't think, I, I think that there's motivated sellers in Collin County and Denton County, and there's certain pockets, and, and like Tim mentioned, certain neighborhoods that um, you're going to want to target, and I would probably say it's a little bit older neighborhoods um, if you're trying to target high equity deals, and then I'm going to target the nice, you know, the newer neighborhoods if I'm targeting um, wholesaling low equity deals. I mean, at the end of the day, um, we're looking for, you know, I'm using the um, the pre foreclosure leads, and uh, well, why don't you give me your give me the uh, screen and let me show you what I mean. You know, just looking at one lead. Um, and so now I think my screen is on, so hold on one second. All right. Let's just take, and let me push this back a little bit. Um, logging in, I mean, I think all I, all, all I want, I think, from this, from this training call or this um, follow-up call is determine where you want to focus your efforts on how far wide is your net and then let's try to crunch the numbers and you know all of these people for instance in Frisco I'm gonna look at um, how many people are posted for foreclosure in Frisco in um, this month for the August 2nd and I've already sent out you know today is the second 
batch of postcards that have been sent out, um, and those are going in the mail today. But I've got 114 people that are posted for this month or August 2nd, and a lot of these people are going to um, take care of it, or they're going to work something out with the bank. And we kind of, and I go over the, you know, go over in detail in the how to buy foreclosure class, the five options, and you know, working with people before the sale, and really that's, you know, on the 15-minute training call that we loaded to FTC. That's what I kind of talk it on, talk about is just focusing. I want to avoid the courthouse steps. I want to avoid this homeowner losing the house. But you know, just looking at this on Acorn in Hickory Springs, I mean. I know where this is. This is 2,400 square foot house, 235, and you know it, it shows to have a little bit of equity, but you know not necessarily. Uh, what is that? I can run the numbers. Hold on one second. Um, what I do is I just take one 166, which is the un the um, estimated unpaid balance and then divide it by 253 and that's 65 cents on the dollar so I mean that what we need to do is I mean uh, you I've already sent out a, a mail but I've sent out I've sent out 115 letters twice okay to these people because this is in my backyard and all it you know all I'm trying to do is find out who has an interest now I don't I don't focus on the like this one right here is a homeowners association um, I, I call this. I don't. I'm looking for FHA, Fannie Mae, um, conventional loan. So I, I will call this out, and I will not uh, mail to this person because this person, what, what's being foreclosed on is their homeowners association lien. And so, what I'm trying to do is just focus on the people where their mortgage is posted for foreclosure. And whether there's equity or not, I mean, this one on Adolphus has equity. This one on Apollo doesn't. In Kings Garden, you know, this is a, uh, you know, built in 2002. And what I'm trying to do is find out if this general, you know, if this person has any interest. And if they do, I'm going to write it, on, I'm going to get it under contract and then uh, fax that contract to the attorney and the lender, Wells Fargo, and see if they'll postpone the auction. To give me time to close, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to market the property to an end buyer, and see if I can find an end buyer that, you know, most likely these people are ten, probably you know, ten thousand dollars behind on their mortgage. But what I'm going to start, what I'm going to do is, once I get it under contract, the contract states I have the right to assign, and I'm going to try to find somebody who wants to live in King's Garden and doesn't want to have to get a new mortgage and will pay top dollar for this property and I'm the middleman you know I basically control the real estate but I've got to find somebody that has that has you know at least ten thousand dollars to bring this delinquent loan current but unfortunately Tim that doesn't put any money in my pocket so I really need to find someone that has thirteen thousand dollars because ten thousand is going to go to the bank and that's what's going to be necessary to reinstate this loan, okay? Um, but I need, you know, for me to make three thousand dollars, I really need to market this property and say thirteen thousand down, take over the seventeen hundred month payment. And what I'm looking for is this property has to be in good shape. If it needs a lot of repairs then I'm not sure it's going to be attractive to the end buyer. But what I'm trying to find is nice houses with no equity. All right? Uh, nice houses with no equity. And these people are, you know, the foreclosure train is coming in 10 days. Same with this one. This one has a little bit of equity. Might not have enough equity if you run, you know, if, if I ran the, my SOS. Let me just pull up my SOS S right here. Um, looking at this property here on ARC, the tax assessed value is 210 and 171. It doesn't have enough, you know, if I put in 210 is the estimated sales price, which again, the tax assessed value is not um, the, you know, the market value, but, and I put in that the square footage 
was 2,200 square feet. So I plug that in. Let's just say 22,000 because we used the $10 a square foot because I put it right here. Actually, let me do this. Change that. Well, you get the point. It tells me 151 is what you'd have to get it under contract. Well, uh, you know, that's not enough, and they owe 171. So there's not going to be a lot of investors that are going to go after that property um, because it doesn't have 30% equity. But that doesn't mean that this isn't something that we can monetize. What we need to find is if Sheila and Stephen Ray have any interest in selling the property and what we want to do is we want to bring their delinquent loan current and then take over the payments or we want to get it under contract. Not that Justin, you or anybody else is going to buy this property but we want to get it under contract and write the contract where we can, we get it under contract and the contract states that we have the right to reinstate this loan and then we're going to make the payments. We're, we're going to tell them that from here on we're going to make the payments. And once you have that under contract, that's when you would um, you know, take it to the next step and, and really find the end buyer, not an end investor. Leo, and we've got a couple questions here. Uh, first, Rustin asks, how do you market those high equity deals? You wouldn't contact your normal buyers list, right? George? How would you market high equity deals? What how would do you mean you, by yeah, how, he, would, or how would he's you asking, market? He's asking would you market those high equity or those uh I think he meant high mortgage balance, not high equity. He's saying you wouldn't contact your normal buyers, so I think he meant those low oh, equity deals. Yeah, how would you market your deal? I'm just saying how would you market to or you know are you are you you know how are, are you advertising to the leads or how are you marketing your deal to um, the end buyer you got to find I guess what the question was Tim if I understand it correctly is how are you finding your end buyer uh, Rustin can you clarify that what uh, yeah my bad uh, he's asking yeah for those mortgage assignment those low equity deals do you need a different list of buyers how do you market them I would say the the number one way is put it on uh, back page and Craigslist. You know, I mean, if you go to Craigslist, let me just open another screen and post a an ad in Craigslist. And right here under um, where is it? Housing swap, real estate for sale. Right here. Put in owner financing or let's just put owner phi and then put in um, let's just click on search nothing's found where am I looking at uh, North Dallas Fort Worth let's see owner why am I not finding I'm putting in something wrong we put in Frisco So we've got a 349. What I would say is, I'm looking down here. Here's a foreclosure, three bedroom. You know, you could put foreclosure. That's what's gonna. And even an even an in buyer wants to buy a foreclosure, but you could say pre foreclosure owner will finance right here. Newer amazing area home, 295,000. And what I would do is list. Hey, um, owner finance owner will finance list 13,000 down take over and what you're doing um, Rustin is you just list whatever the mortgage payment is so you know what we're trying to do is we're gonna they're gonna have to take over the existing loan so whatever the mortgage payment is let's say it's 1700 a month it's say 13 down 1700 a month buys you this house and and really 10,000 is going to the bank to reinstate the loan and 3,000 is going to you. And you put a picture right in here of the property. You know, I put several pictures. You might also go to um, this website called Postlets to get a template and create your listing here. And you can you can create and it's free. I think you can do up to a certain number and it's free. You can set up an account 
and it will give you get your listings on these sites and it will basically syndicate your listing on all these sites and obviously Craigslist is where you want but you know if there's a lot of people out there that want to live in Frisco and uh, you know and, and there's a lot of people in all different markets that can't that can't get financing right now and they love the they love the idea of the you know owner financing seller financing financing is already in place and they just need to come up they got to dig in their bank account and come up with $13,000 Right, anybody else have some questions? Craigslist is where you're going to find. Short answer, Rustin, is Craigslist. Okay, I'm muting myself. Okay, let's see. Rustin says, makes sense. Would be awesome if we could get a couple examples of some ads you've posted in the past, just the wording, etc. All right. All right. Don't, you know, keep, it's the KISS program, right? Um, you know, if, if, it's, if it's an attractive deal, you don't have to be very descriptive. Just down payment, monthly payment. It's available. And, you know, it's available. Just tell them those so you don't get a lot of tire kickers. That's what I, you know. If you're too generic, you're going to get a lot. You're going to. They're going to. The tire kicker is going to waste your time. So, Randy asked um, to start. Should they only begin with one zip code. Randy, it's just going to depend on the zip code. I mean, if you're looking at the HEB area. Uh, you may pick a zip code that it may, I mean it may only have 300 addresses that meet your criteria, and uh, that's not going to be enough. So uh, I always tell people what I what I say is you guys need to develop a budget, and then off of that budget, you need to um, f you need to fill that monthly budget with a uh, with the number of mailers that you want to do. And you start in your backyard, the area that you feel the most comfortable with, and then you expand from there to fulfill the budget. Uh, and, and again, this is a consistent budget. So uh, I'll give you guys some example. And what I'm going to do is, George, I'm going to take the screen back from you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I want to add one more kind of a homework assignment that I'd like these guys to do after you're done. And bring okay. up that Mapsco page, the, the 29A. Alrighty. Bring it up. Oh wait, you said 29A, not the overview. Uh, what, whatever that was, you know, you were, you logged, you know, you kind of zoomed in and. Yeah. Yeah, that one right there. Okay. I think you know, turn that if you would, vertical. Yeah. So what I would say is, look, y'all need to know your backyard, and the best way to do it is, you know, every month I go out and drive a different neighborhood, you know, and, and because it just, I get to know which neighborhoods, you know, when someone calls you because you are marketing to this zip code, right? And, and you can see how, Tim, you know, the You've got 75041, 75040, and 75043. You've got three zip codes on this page, don't you? Yes. And so you just have to, you know, the maps go will kind of, but what I would say is, you know, this, this grid took you an hour and a half. Uh, you know, one grid takes you an hour to an hour and a half to drive. And so you need to pick a certain grid and look at the type of properties and, and get to know so when someone calls and, and they tell you that it's in a such and such subdivision, you know. When someone tells me they live in Plantation Resorts or Hickory Springs or Griffin Park or wherever, you know, I know those subdivisions because I've driven down those streets and that's going to help you immensely on the type of product, the type of house, the type of builder, things of that nature. And so I think all of you guys need to take that, you know, we're talking about lead generation. You know, it, it, number one is it, it helps you and you get to find, you know, abandoned houses, vacant houses, things like that. Because, look, at the end of the day, the, the, the less competition, 
the better the deal is. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people that subscribe to the foreclosure list, and there's a lot of people that might that want to invest. And so, if you're driving properties and you see an abandoned house, there's probably not a lot of people that have seen that house. And so you just got to be diligent about how do you start marketing to that person. And if you get a big enough database of abandoned houses, you're going to get some people. And it doesn't matter if we don't, you know, now we don't have to have 30% equity. I mean, yes, it's nice, and those are the most attractive deals. But I'll tell you, and I don't know what area, but if I could buy 50 houses in Frisco, I would do it. I mean, because I know that Frisco is going to rebound in rent right now. I know of a lot of investors that would love to buy a few houses in Frisco because I'm telling you, um, you know, rent houses in Frisco are being leased in five days or less, and they're getting top top dollar. And so, there's investors out there. If you guys can put something together where I can that 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 this investor can take over existing loans. They'll pay you two to five thousand dollars. You see what I mean? Um, and so, or they, you've got something that's got is loaded with equity, and you know they'll pay cash. But I think right now the word on the street is you know it's it's a good time to buy and hold for this market to turn. And and there's certain pockets uh, in certain neighborhoods that are ripe for that. And so you won't know that um, until you get to know your backyard and, and you start kind of looking at what lease, you know, what properties are going for, um, you know, and I'm talking about sales and lease because I think there's a big contingency out there that's looking at buying and holding. So, and what's really attractive to me and to other investors and to Tim is, hey, if we can take over someone's loan, and we don't have to come out of pocket that much, our, our return on our investment, our cash on cash return is phenomenal, not to mention the IRR when we go to sell it five to ten years from now. So anyway, just keep that in mind. I think the exercise that I'd, I'd like them to do, Tim, is, is drive three or four grids this weekend, you know, and get to know and write down properties. All of y'all should also have some type of comparable sales database. Uh, you know, one well, not yet, not yet, not yet. Dude, that's oh. next. That's next week. I told okay. I told them not to do it until next week. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we need to be able to. Yeah. You know, again. Yeah. I'm putting the car before the horse. But the bottom line is, um, anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, no, I mean, yeah, they're they're going to need that, and that's going to be an exercise for next week when we get into uh, lead conversion. Uh, and uh, what we're doing is we're targeting some of these houses in this area, and we're, I mean, we're guys, we're going to try to we're going to try to land some of them. So uh, let's see, there was a, Joe Snow was asking me to go over back into this questions panel. Tim, can you talk about your general target zip code, postcard mailings, criteria filtering, how often you refresh the list? Also, will Roddy FLS have data product we can buy for this type of mailing? Okay. Yes, Roddy FL, FLS can provide you with this data. Uh, and I, what I have on my screen right now is, in general, what I mail in my target zip codes, uh, I-mail, Garland, Mesquite, Richardson, Rowlett, Rockwall, Dallas, Sunnyvale, I think that's about it. Uh, that's actually part of my uh, my routine mailers, and through that, that get that that gave me about twelve thousand addresses to target, and I just hit those addresses every three months. Uh, this month was my I don't know, what, what month was this? I think this was the Mesquite Garland month. Mesquite Garland, Royce City, yeah. That's uh, 
that's what this month was. So, uh, Joe, does that answer your question? Do you want me to expand more? Randy, did, I, did we, George and I answer your question about which zip code to start with? Because what happens is if I pulled this up, if I pulled this criteria up and uh, say I was looking to get, uh, say I, I was targeting 3,000 mailers a month, and say I pulled this criteria up and, and it only gave me uh, a, a total of 10,000 mailers, which wouldn't be enough to hit my 3,000, my budget of uh, you know, $1,000 a month in advertising. Well, what I would do is then I would back into, do I, do I need to uh, change this tax value up to 200000 Because that's still a doable house in this market. Uh, do I, you know, I'd leave the square footage alone. And, and really, if that tax value filter didn't put me where I needed to be, well, then you come down here and, you add Carrollton in and see what that does. Uh, well, maybe maybe that uh, – well, actually, I wouldn't add Carrollton into mine. What I would do is I would add another zip code in North Dallas probably or Northeast Dallas or, you know, somewhere off of, uh, you know, maybe Lake Highlands, something like that. Uh, or and, you just need to add a different database, you know, or data yeah. set. I mean, yeah. it, it's that's that's for absentee. Or you, or are you talking about? Look, I mean, there's three thousand mailers, um, you know, a month. Um, to simplify, and, to simplify it, I mail this list to absentee and, and owner occupied. It's all I just treat them all the same now. It's just it's easier to manage. They get a postcard every three months for twelve months, and then I redo the list. So what happens is if I if in October, when I pull my list, if George Roddy has owned a house in 75043 for 15 years or more and the tax value falls in the bucket and it's got more than 900 square foot, he's going to get four postcards from me over the next year. I'm never pulling another list, not doing any of that. So, yes, yeah. Joe, after 12 months, I re-pull the list and start mailing it again. And did you tell them about the the FLS discount? No. Okay. Well, yeah, you know, I talked to Senior, George Senior, about, you know, getting you guys. I know that there's a lot of lists and products that you guys um, need to get. I mean, we're talking about leads, and so you you got to think about, what you know, what do I want? So, you know, um, it's basically 30% off if you tell either Rebecca, George Sr., or Sherry that's in the office, one of the, those, you know, Sherry or Rebecca will answer the phone. And, you know, so if you need the absentee owners, hey, I want to find people that, you know, have owned the property for 15 years or more in these zip codes, then it's going to be X. You know, that this is what we charge. But, um, you know, just for, for the FTC students, you know, he's, he said that he could give a 30% discount to you guys. So, um, but you have to say, hey, I'm an FTC student because he's not, they're not going to quote, you know, they'll give you the quote, and if you forget, well, that's, so you all need to write that down if you want the probate leads, if you want the pre-foreclosure leads, if you want the absentee owner leads. You need to give us your criteria, criteria, and then we can run it, and then we'll take 30% off. But, you know, that's really basically good for, you know, the next couple of weeks, and then we're going to forget about it. So, um, you know, take advantage of that because it's not something we do every day. Um, but it's something to get you to save you some money when you start setting up your business. You do need those lead sources. So, anyway. And, and Joe, to answer your question, yes, we focused a lot of Module 2 on the different types of motivated sellers and the motivated seller leads, but my uh, big mailer, yeah, is, a, is not to those types of conditions specifically, but uh, yeah, it, 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 I throw a bigger net because I've been doing it longer. 
And so one of the reasons we're in FTC focusing on some of these motivated seller lists is because a lot of the guys in the program don't want to throw as big of a net as I do. Uh, I mean, you know, if you want the net, uh, you know, Joe, we, we talked about your specific circumstance. If, if I was you, I would probably take that right there for you. Uh, and I, I, I'd, uh, that's the first I would program in. And I'd see how many that put me every month. And yeah, the, then, only thing I, the only thing I would interject is the 900 square feet. It, my only thing is that could that could be a two bedroom house, right? Yeah. I mean, I, and I don't know how many wholesalers, you know, how many investors, and in buyers for that matter are interested. You know, you you talked about that. That's more of a tran a transient house. Yeah. I see, uh, my my deal is I just know in Garland and Mesquite, there's a lot of 915, 930 square feet, three one ones, that were the 1954 uh, style homes. Uh, mm -hmm. I've bought some houses over in Farmers Branch, over in Old Town Farmers Branch, that were in the mid to high 900 square foot. That were, uh, a, you know, the three one, three one and a half. Just, you know, the real, 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 real small houses. But, I mean, over in Mesquite, Lord, there's one neighborhood. I, I swear, I bought a hundred houses. I mean, it, it, the average house is 930 square feet. Uh, yeah. And Rustin was just asking that if if we. Uh, if I try to weed out two bedrooms, and the answer is no, because I don't trust. I mean, here's what you have to understand about tax roll data. It's wrong. It's very, very, very wrong. There's two things that they like to get right. The, the square footage based on an exterior me measurement and the value. They try to get that as right as they can because that's ultimately what they're trying to do. Numbers of kitchens, numbers of bedrooms, numbers of bathrooms, don't ever go off of that on a tax roll. It's most likely incorrect. Uh, it just that's the assumption I like to make. So, yeah, I mean, you you may. I mean, if this 900 plus square foot returns too much, you may want to uh, bump that up to a thousand, 1100 square feet. But you know, that's just that's my criteria, and that's where really you're going to need to get out and go drive your backyard and get into some houses and uh, and and see what it is. And Joe, you asked, so Roddy can pull from tax roll based upon all these criteria, number of bedrooms, square foot, etc. Talk to Rebecca. Not number of bedrooms, yeah. Square footage, yes. Um, Joe, they can pull by the number of bedrooms, but like I just said, you don't want to. Does that make sense? I mean, I hope so. But who do they talk to, George, for if they want to talk about getting that Sherry, stuff? Sherry, uh, Rebecca, my sister, or Sherry. Um, at the office, two one or let me give you the number nine seven two, two five zero, zero nine nine three, and just tell them you're an FTC student. And make sure you get your discount. Yeah. Uh, what other questions we got, folks? It's one thirty. Oh, someone's raising their hand. Let's get in there and see who that is. Nope, the hand went down. No one wanted to talk. Um, oh, Bill. Bill, I'm trying to unmute you, but it's not wanting to. Bill, I'm trying. Can you type your question? It's not letting me unmute you for some reason. Okay, Bill. Anybody else got a question? Bill, I, for some reason it's not letting me unmute you. It's letting me unmute everybody else. Maybe it doesn't want you to talk. Anybody else got questions? Okay, wait, there it is. If you already have <laughs> George, Betty, 
<laughs> Betty and Nancy would like to know if they already get their list from your family, do they still get a discount? They've been buying them since October. <laughs> oh, George. Yeah. The anything you go from this point forward, I mean, what I would suspect is Betty, Nancy, you guys are going to probably want to add um, some other databases like absentee owners. So anything that um, anything that you guys add from this point forward, yes. Uh, Bill, your question is right. You're in New Jersey, so you're asking, do we know any information uh, for some lead sources up in New Jersey? Yeah. You know, yeah, what I would say is, you know, there's there's list providers, you know, in New Jersey, and, and what I would do is just go on to Google and, and you know, you, or you might, um, you might call the, I don't know how, you know, New Jersey is a little different than Texas, but, uh, you know, there's probably a list provider, and I probably would stay with a local provider, you know, someone local instead of one of these national groups, just because I found that the, the accuracy is a little bit better. But um, what I would look for is some type of uh, absentee owners. You know, go to the county appraisal district, or type in you know county appraisal uh, absentee owners, and or call a realtor up there and say, hey, I want to get a list of all the absentee owners or all the homes that are over 15 years old in this. And can you provide it, or who would I go to? Because realtors could be you know. Uh, a lead source there, or they might know, or is there a local company that provides foreclosure leads, or is there a local company? But stay local, just because most local companies will spend a little bit more time, and the accuracy is a little bit better. But that's what I would recommend. If if you drop me off in in South Padre, or you drop me off in Oklahoma City, what I would do is for the pre foreclosures, I'd go directly to the county clerk or the county office where the postings are filed and I would talk to them and say, you know, because if you went to Dallas, they would probably give you our name and say, well, there's a company that's been doing it for 40 years. Here's their number. So go to the county and, and ask them if they know of any local third-party companies that provide, put a list out. Um, for absentee owners, I would call realtors and say, you know, where would I get this? And, you know, some of them might not know. Or go to the appraisal district. You know, or do you know of any, because most, you know, most, I mean, all, what I found is they'll know, they'll, they'll have some type of um, third-party company that they know subscribe to them and provide it. Any other questions for, oh, uh, there we go. Uh, sending some to the same residence for 12 months more. Yes, uh, Gene. I am. Uh, if you've got a target house in my target area, I'm going to send you mail for 12 months. And then if after 12 months, if I go pull the list, if you still meet my criteria, you're going to keep uh, <laughs> uh, you're going to keep getting mail from me. Uh, Bill asked, when we get ready to do postcards, do you have a good inexpensive, inexpensive fulfillment center? Yes, uh, we do. And uh, Click to mail is one, and then another is a, a place called uh, Platinum Direct that we're working on getting you guys some discounts on, and we'll be telling you about that hopefully real soon. One question was, you know, is do you get 30% off for each county? I think you, I don't know if you answered that, Tim, but yeah, I mean, if you choose Colin and Denton or Dallas and Tarrant, it's 30% off whatever product you buy. So if it's two counties, you get 30% off each county. I think a good, you know, before these guys, they haven't purchased anything. They might not, they might not purchase any leads this uh, today. I would say an exercise that uh, Tim and I would like for you guys to carry out is drive some grids. You know, go to 7-Eleven or go to Sam's or go to Walmart and pick up a Mapsco if you don't already have one. Let's figure out the grids and let's drive one or two grids this weekend and, and let's look for some abandoned houses, some absentee, and you know, but you might go to the appraisal district and, and find the zip codes, you know, put in a couple streets and determine where the homes are 15 years old or older, you know, or 15 or older in years of construction. Because that's, you know, um, that's, you're going to have the opportunity to, to find deals with more equity in that, at that, uh, 
year of construction. The newer ones, you can certainly find some abandoned houses uh, in some apps, you know, some some ugly houses and in the newer communities. But I think that lends itself more to the uh, let's wholesale this to or assign this deal to a, uh, an end buyer. Uh, Randy wants you to repeat repeat how to contact FLS. Yeah, nine seven two two five zero zero nine nine three nine seven two two five zero zero nine nine three and ask for Sherry uh, or Rebecca. Sherry's here here now, and Rebecca leaves at one. So that's and just you know she can go through the different products. But I definitely think absentee owners. I def, you know, you, all of y'all need absentee owners. I mean, what, give that, me that. Uh, give me that one more time so I can type it on the slide. Oh, zero nine nine three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bill asked where the big barbecue will be whenever we do a couple deals. Uh, it'll be in Dallas, Bill, in the winter, so you can leave New Jersey and come on down. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, yeah, great. Yeah, Bill, if you want to come down and watch the Cowboys, I'll be happy to take you to a game. I've got tickets. Uh, unless you're a Giants fan, then that offer is off the table. Uh, anybody got any other questions? Uh, I, I want to be clear. Uh, although this is action-oriented, don't start flying off the handle right now and taking too much action. Uh, I want you to send me uh, and George an email at edu at flipthatcontract.com. I would like to uh, I would like you guys to please email us a the following information. This is what I want. Now I'm going to type this out for you so that there is there are no questions. This is the uh, and actually. What I want you to do is I want you to not email this. I want you to post, go to the Flip That Contract portal and uh, module two follow-up is you need to go to the portal and post a website address, which is your squeeze page for sellers that sellers go to and say, no, I'll tell you what, so that you guys aren't embarrassed, go ahead and email us, okay? So I don't want to embarrass you. Email to edu at flipthatcontract.com. The website address, you need to friend Tim and George on Facebook. You still need to request to join the FTC it's flip that contract, no spaces. Facebook group. You still need to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And in turn, we will subscribe to yours. That's a way our cash buyers will find you. Uh, what else, George? Uh, oh, I need uh, your Google Voice number. I need to know what number uh, Google Voice slash business number. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like you to scan or take a picture of uh, your business card. I'd like to see those. Uh, did, George, did we already upload the PDF creator? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you should be able yeah. to, they should be able to just take a, the proof that they get from Vistaprint and just print it as a PDF and show it to us. Right. Uh, what else are we looking at? Um, oh, I want to know what is your primary zip? Or zips, you know. Because, I, I mean, for me, it would be my primary. There's, you know, two zips that's my primary. Really three now because... Uh, but that's kind of my number one three zips. 
Then I want you to establish a dig zone. And that dig zone is that that area of some er some part of town that you're going to make yourself a pro in. Yeah. I mean, because I'm telling you, on this page, there aren't many streets that I haven't either bought a house on or looked at a house on. Now, you're not going to be like that to start off. But you will be like that if you keep following our instructions. So, I mean, you know, this is serious. You need to get in here. You need to go. You, you need to, to dig deep. And uh, you, need, you need to establish a page like this because I'll tell you, there's a house right here on Bridalwood that I bought and sold to Joe Snow who's on this call. I wholesaled it to him. And, you know, it came off a probate lead and that was actually part of my dig leads. I bought a house on High Meadow. I bought a house, own a, own a house still on La Vista, own a house still on Curtis, own a house still on Richard, got a second lien on Cove, own one on High Country still, thank God I sold one on High Valley, own one on Cascade, own one on Linda, own one on Ridgewood, own one on Carolyn. So, I mean, this is really my, this is my target area. I mean, these, these are, these are great, great little houses for me. And uh, you need to find an area that, that you're going to focus on. And, and it may change over the next four to six months. And that's the thing. It may change. I mean, when I started out, I mainly focused in North Ridge Estates over at Highway 80 and, and, and uh, uh Beltline, and this just changed. But this is a great area for me, and I hope, and, and I want you guys to. I mean, you know, now it's time to go burn up the gas and uh, drive through some neighborhoods and define where you're going to target. Because if you'll find out where you're going to target, George and I will help you get the houses that you want and and or need to be successful. But if you don't know where you're going to target, there's not much we can do for you. Except get you out in the truck and, you know, beat your head. Anybody got questions? Yeah. It's time to go. Last call for questions. Yes, this webinar has been recorded. I am stopping it right now, uh, and it will be posted.